So I forgot to mention in the last video that the overall order here, since m was 1 and n was 1, that the overall order is just 1 plus 1 is 2. So very easy, just add up the two orders to get the overall order. Okay, let's try another one of these problems um, where they give you different concentrations and then you measure the rate. So um, if we look at these, let's see, so these guys are staying the same and then these are changing. So let's look at how that affects the rate. And right away, you can just kind of eyeball this and see that when this concentration stays the same and this one doubles, nothing happens to the rate. So right away, I already know that, that B is going to be zero with order, that I can double the concentration and it doesn't affect the rate. I can triple the concentration, I can quadruple, I can do anything I want to this concentration and it's not going to affect the rate because it's zero with order. And that's what I can see from this. But let's, let's work it out anyway. So let's compare 1 and 2 um, to figure out um, what, what n is going to be, which we already said is going to be uh, 0, but let's, let's work it out anyway, and then try m, then we'll compare it in other ones to other, two other reactions. So I'm going to do rate 2 over rate 1. So this time, since these, these rates are the same, I went over to the concentrations and I found this guy is 0.2, so I want him on top so I don't get a uh, a fraction. So I have K times concentration times concentration over K times concentration concentration and I should have told you here we want to put the 4.0 so this is rate 2 over rate 1. Okay, sorry about that. 4 times 10 to the negative 5 over 4.0 times 10 to the negative 5 so that gives me 1. My k's are going to cancel. Now I can plug everything in. So I have rate 2. So I want 0.1 and 0.2. And then 0.1 and 0.1. So my k's cancel. Let's cancel things in green. 0.1 to the m. 0.1 to the m. Those cancel. 0.2 over 0.1 gives me, gives me 2. Right. So I have 1 equals 2 to the n. So when you plug this into your calculator, try again. What can n be? 0, 1, 2, 3. That's the quickest way to do it without using logs because pre-calc is not a prereq for this class. So I'm going to keep it simple. So 2 to the 0 with power gives me 1. So I know that n is 0, which is what we said it was going to be. Now let's try to compare two other reactions. Um, so if I did 2 and 3, this guy's changing and that guy's changing. That's not going to help us. Um, so we want one where somebody's staying constant and somebody's changing. So this time, this guy, if, if you compare experiments one and three, this guy is staying constant, this guy is changing, and then I can see how the reaction is changing. So I'm going to compare three and one, and I'm going to put three over one because the rate of three is bigger. So I'm going to do rate three over rate one, where rate three is the 16 times 10 to the negative five, and 1 is just 4 times 10 to the negative 5. See if you can set this up yourself. So it's okay to pause it to the m, to the n, to the m, and to the n. And now I just read off whatever's on line 3. So my point 2 goes here, my point 1 is there. And then I'm comparing it to rate 1, so I have point 1 and point 1. So 0.1 to the n divided by 0.1 to the n, that's easy. This over here, this becomes 4. My k's cancel. 0.2 divided by 0.1 is just 2 raised to the m. So I want to solve for m. So 2 raised to the 0th power is 1. 2 raised to the 1 is 2. 2 raised to the 2 is 4. So I find that m is equal to 2. So n is 0 and m is 2. So the rate law, when they're asking for the rate law, you have to summarize everything that you just did up there. And you say rate is equal to k times this and this. So my reactants are here just a and b. So I put an a in here and a b in here. And m goes with the rate. Right, this is m and this is n, which is 0. Now b raised to the 0th power, no matter what I put in there for b, I can put 25 raised to the 0th is 1. Uh, 
64 raised to the zeroth power is 1. No matter what I put in here, it's going to be 1, so I don't even care about it. It's it, No matter what I do to that concentration of B, it doesn't affect the rate. So my rate is just equal to K times A squared. And the overall order here, 2 plus uh, 0 gives me 2. So the overall order is the second order, if you're looking for the overall order. They didn't ask for it, but sometimes they do. Now we can look at the rate constant. So now we can solve for k. Now that we know this, we're always going back to this thing in blue. That's the one we're looking for. Now that we know that rate law, we can solve for the rate constant. And so the way we're going to do that is we know that rate equals k times a squared. So I'm going to go up to the top, and I'm going to find so what's in the table? Rates are in the table. Concentrations are in the table. We just solve for M and N. That's what we just did. Now we want to look for K. So everything comes back to this rate law, always coming back to that rate law. So I can pick any of these experiments. I'm going to pick the first one because it's just easy to read out of the table. It doesn't matter. They should all be the same because they're all at constant um, temperature, the same temperature. So the rate constant should be fairly similar from experiment 1, 2, and 3. Uh, the only thing we changed was the concentration, but the rate constant should be the same. So A is 0.1, B is 0.1, and then the rate is 4 times 10 to the negative 5. So I know the rate right here is 4 times 10 to the negative 5, and they tell you the units in the table. It's molar per second. K is what I'm looking for, and then A, I only have to care about the concentration of A. B doesn't matter. So A is 0.1. So I have. 0 0.100 molar, and that's squared. Great. And so now all I want to do is solve for k. So I just have to divide this by 0 0.100 molar squared, both sides. 0 0.100 molar squared. And that works out to be. 4.0 times 10 to the negative 3. And then look at the units here. One of these molars cancels one of those molars. So I have nothing on top, but then I have molar times seconds on the bottom. So you can leave it like that. Another way that you might see this um, is those units would be molar to the negative 1 seconds to the negative 1. That just means it's 1 over molar, 1 over seconds. So because this is second order overall, these are always what the units look like for a second order reaction. It's always, you know, um, mol one, one, the molar, the number of molars that you have on the bottom is 1 less than whatever the order is. So you'll see different units in K depending on if you have a first order, second order, third order, zeroth order overall reaction. So be careful with your, your units on these guys. Um, so after you found, you have your rate law. Okay, so we have our rate law here. Um, we use the rate and the concentration from the table to solve for the K. Now in part C, they give it, now we know K, and they're going to give us a new concentration and we can solve for a new rate. So that's what we're doing now. So we're going back to, running out of colors, go back to red here. So I know this rate law. I know the rate law looks like rate equals K times a squared. And now they're telling me, okay, well, what will it be if they if you change the concentration of rate? Now find a new rate, and they just change the concentration of a. So I know my k from part b is 4.0 times 10 to the negative 3, 1 over molar times seconds. That's my k. And a now they're telling me is 0.050 molar, that whole thing squared. Now I don't have to worry about B because B is not even in the rate law. I could put it in there, I could say 0.1 raised to the zeroth power just gives me 1, so it doesn't really affect anything. So now I just have to multiply these through here and I get a new rate. And my new rate looks like 1.0 times 10 to the negative 5 and my units are molar per second because those are the typical units of rate. So just to summarize what we did in this whole problem, first thing we do is we compare two reactions at a time, right? So we did two over one, we did three over one, um, and I pick which one goes on top by however big the, the rate is, and if the rates are the same, I know it's going to be zero with order. Uh, make sure when you're picking these, one, one reactant is staying the same and the other one is changing. 
So you didn't want to compare 2 and 3 because they're both changing. So once you solve for m and n, you have the orders of the reaction. Sometimes they'll ask you to find the overall order. You just add those together. And then you want to find the rate constant. So if you know the rate, which you know the rate, because you get lots of rates in here. If you did this for experiment 2 or experiment 3, you're going to end up with the same rate constant, or about the same rate constant. So it doesn't matter which one you pick. I usually just do the first one, um, just because it's easier to read off the table. So I know this rate that's in the table. Concentrations are going to be in the table. You're going to solve for k. So we solved for k. Rate constant is k. That's what you're looking for. And then the third part, once you know k and you know these concentrations, then you can solve for the rate. So here I had my k from part b. They gave me new concentrations. It's almost like they're giving you another experiment here. They're saying, all right, well, what would this rate be if this was 0.05 and what was the other one? 0.1. Solve for that rate. That's pretty much what you're doing in that third part. They're giving you new concentrations. Now solve for the rate. And we're going to do that in lab too. We're going to do the same kind of thing in lab. That's going to be like part D, and you're going to be really confused because it's phrased a little bit differently, but that's essentially what you're doing. Once you know the rate constant and you have new concentrations, you can solve for a new rate.